you can hear the drill physically, saw your skull open. What would I say to uh, my younger self prior to diagnosis? Take up smoking, because it's not gonna make a difference. <laughs> I'd much rather have like five quality years and then like, you know, two months of misery. I didn't want to have the pity party where it's like, oh, he's so brave, he has cancer and he's still going on with it. Like, oh, he's he fantastic. I, I hate pity, it doesn't help. So it's the usual sort of pretending like this isn't being recorded, but it's being recorded. I've watched the Netflix show once or twice. I have terminal brain cancer, but I'm using that against itself and I'm breaking the world record for raising the most amount of money ever for running a marathon. I don't ask you to donate in order to make that money. I ask that the channel gets as big as possible so that I can get sponsorship. It is working. It is a crazy system. It sounds like an absolute scam, but it's not. It is just marketing. It is just basic marketing. So uh, I've been doing um, guinea pig, human guinea pig medical trials for donkey's years now. I was falling under the uh, healthy male category and this was specifically for something to do with the brain. So they gave an MRI scan and during the MRI scan they were like, right, uh, you have a benign tumor. So I got to check the second time around and they said, okay, this is not benign. This is growing. We need to go into surgery. We need to start taking uh, action, physical action against this uh, straight away. So I hadn't told anyone about the um, the benign tumor. The second one, I kind of had a, s a debate with myself. So it's like, do I want to tell everybody? I knew if I told my uh, parents that they would be badgering me constantly about updates. Have you have you looked into this? Have you looked into that? Have you like read this book? And it's like, no, I haven't. I don't want to focus everything that I do on the worst thing in my life. The kind of worry was, am I gonna go through the surgery and then sort of not be physically able to actually tell them what happened? And I was like, ah, that's, that's mean on them. That would really upset them. One of my friends, uh, when I was telling everybody, one of the first things he said was, uh, well, did I happen to know when you first got your tumor? Because it would certainly explain a lot about your behavior over like the course of your life. Yeah, I'm at the 11th hour here now, this is, uh, 20 minutes or so, and they're gonna start taking me into the operating theater. No, I just thought I'd sort of document this, seeing as how it's a rather unique experience for a 31 year old to have to go through brain surgery from absolutely no uh, symptoms or warnings or anything like that. The craniotomy is not a pleasant surgery to have to go through. My one was on my left temporal lobe. Uh, which meant that uh, it's right beside my ear, so you can hear the drill physically, like uh, uh, saw your skull open. From the surgeon's perspective, I think it went uh, it went pretty good. Uh, the diagnosis was uh, this is uh, pretty much what we thought it was going to be at stage three. What you're going to go through is uh, this, 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 and this, and it's the same thing we predicted. So. Uh, chemotherapy and radiotherapy and all that sort of stuff. If you damage certain parts of your um, the different areas within the brain, uh, as long as you don't break the actual uh, damage the uh, the functioning parts, your brain can actually move those working parts into somewhere else. So that was something that was uh, really sort of um, uplifting and hopeful, knowing that even though they're mucking around with my brain, it might not affect my ability to speak at all. The stillness that you have to do within the, uh, within the surgery itself gets very unpleasant very quickly. They literally have a prod. Your brain doesn't have a, ner have a nervous system, so you don't feel this. Um, so when they prod around, they are looking for his speed of uh, speaking has slowed down. What is this? It's a book. And that, uh, they're like, okay, that's a um, uh, uh, tissue that's being used. That's practical tissue. We don't want that. They do the awake surgery so they can physically do that, so they can test you out. If ever you see videos where someone is like playing a violin or uh, doing stuff during brain surgery, they actually do that in order to make sure that you are still um, continuing with brain function.
The advice I would give, don't be a pussy. That's it. It's not going to help. Uh, it is a negative situation to be in and dwelling on it, uh, addressing it, certainly. Dwelling on it, no, doesn't help. Keep going. Find some way to push through in any capacity that you can because getting pissed off isn't going to help. For me, like the, the choice of do you want to do awake surgery or do you want to not do awake surgery is not a choice. I can say to anybody who's ever had the option of doing awake brain surgery and they didn't do it, you're a pussy and you deserve whatever shit has come your way afterwards. Because it's just a poor life choice. There is no question. It's the difference of do you want to suffer for two hours and then the rest of the quality of your life is vastly improved and I think anybody who takes the other thing is just an idiot and you deserve whatever shit has happened to you. So fuck you, <laughs> you coward. I know this sounds weird but much to my delight it's not uh, something that you wear away on like dementia or Alzheimer's where it's like I'm gonna lose a huge amount of my brain capacity. It's actually quite sudden if I had a choice, this is definitely the one I'd pick. I'd much rather have like five quality years and then like, you know, two months of misery versus 10 years of slowly debilitating, uh, losing the ability to do things. Because for me, I think that would uh, incite a lot more fear where you'd wake up every day and be like, okay, what's lost today? It doesn't mean that your whole existence turns to mush. It means that the particular area is damaged and the rest of your body is able to function alarmingly well. So, have faith. What would I say to uh, my younger self prior to diagnosis? All of the things that you're interested in, do more of them. Other than that, nothing really else. Um, take up smoking, because it's not going to make a difference. <laughs>